10 Tips to Lose Chest Fat Hi, Dr. Mike Diamonds. When I was overweight, I had a significant amount of chest fat, amongst other things. Honestly, it wasn't the best look, and it knocked my confidence. In this video, I'll be sharing the 10 tips I used, as well as all of my clients, to lose chest fat fast and permanently. But before we dive in, let's dive into the simple anatomy of the chest. The pectoralis major is the most superficial muscle of the chest, and on top of it is a layer of subcutaneous fat tissue. The higher body fat percentage you are, the more appearance you have of man boots. At lower body fat percentages, you can achieve a better and more confident look. Watch this video till the end because all the answers you need to finally get rid of your chest fat is here. Tip 1. A caloric deficit. You must be in an energy deficit and make sure the size of the diet is appropriate. Preferably a higher protein diet, moderate carbon lower fat. To get rid of chest fat is the same as getting rid of fat overall. It's governed by the same law, a negative energy balance. But what happens in the body? Depending on the energy supply and demand, adipocytes, also known as fat cells, can take up and store fat from the blood or release fat back to the blood. After eating, when the energy supply is high, the hormone insulin keeps the fatty acids inside the adipocyte. Conversely, in a negative energy balance, your body releases a group of hormones, including epinephrine and hormone-sensitive lipase. It releases the fat to be utilized as energy. Over time, consistently being in a negative energy balance, your adipocytes empty of fat cells, and you are then able to reveal the muscle that has been under that fat. If you would like a more detailed physiology of fat loss, let me know in the comments below. A caloric deficit is what's going to enable you to burn off fat in the first place and consequently chest fat. It's the month of December, it's a month of giving and I'm very thankful for you guys. As I promised, I was going to pick two people for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me for free. The two winners is Badre Aisa and Kate Bender. Please reach out to me on Instagram. Congratulations, I'm excited to work with you. In this video and each and every single video for the next month of December and potentially January, I'll be doing a giveaway in each video. In this video, I'll be giving away two $100 gift cards for my supplement sponsors, EHP Labs, so you can get anything from their site. All you have to do to enter is like the video subscribe if you're new and comment down below and you should hear if you potentially won for the next one and if you don't i'll be doing a lot more throughout this month and potentially the next let's continue with the video you've probably heard of this one before and felt like it didn't work the blunt truth is it's likely you weren't in a deficit take a week to truly track everything you eat using my fitness pal tip two Building your chest can help with giving it a great shape. I stopped having the man boob look by developing my chest. Without strength training, it's impossible to build muscle. Having a combination of a lower body fat percentage and a well-developed chest. I present the three best exercises according to the science. This will help you lose fat overall and chest fat for good. The long-term approach to having an amazing chest is to develop them. Progressively overload them like you would your shoulders or your biceps. The more muscle tissue you have on your chest, the more you'll see them at a lower body fat percentage. This is why I have a better shaped chest now, even at a healthier and higher body fat percentage. Having an outstanding chest requires four simple workouts. A total of eight studies were utilized for referencing this video. And one consistency was that the barbell bench press is by far the best exercise for chest development. And therefore it deserves to be the first exercise in any training program targeting the chest. Akagi and colleagues found that there was a direct correlation with pectoral size and bench press performance. The EMG data from Bulk, Burns and Buskies showed that the barbell bench press being the most superior chest exercise. Tip three, incline press. Targeting the upper chest, pars clavicularis. Chebs and colleagues found that a bench press angle of 44 degrees and 56 degrees resulted in greater chest activation of the upper pectoralis compared to a horizontal bench. Why I picked the inclined dumbbell bench over the barbell is one, to provide a greater range of motion at the bottom and the top of the movement, 
providing you more bang for your buck in the exercise. Tip 4. Eat enough protein and here's why. It keeps you fuller on fewer calories and eating protein is highly satiating. It prevents muscle loss, as we know, it's essential for building muscle. It increases energy expenditure. Eating more protein can result in more calories burnt due to its thermic effect of food. It takes your body more energy to digest protein than any other macronutrient. It improves muscle recovery and repair and the list goes on. The bottom line is this, if you don't eat much protein, you're going to have a rough time losing weight and particularly with losing fat and not muscle. Research shows that somewhere between 0.8 and 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day is optimal, which works out to be about 30 to 40% of your total calories. Tip 4.5, and this will help plenty of people with the same problem, is to gently hit the like button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you're new, subscribe, it's free. Hit the bell notification if you're new. Tip 5. Is a cable crossover or a pec deck? A study from the American Council of Exercise analyzing the top three most effective chest exercises, utilizing the average electromyographic data and RPE, ratings of perceived exertion, which is a scale used to measure the intensity of your exercise between zero and 10. Zero being nothing at all, four being somewhat heavy, seven very, very heavy, and 10 being very, very, very heavy. Both the pec deck at 98% of muscle activation compared to the barbell bench press and the bend forward cable crossover, 93% of muscle activation, elicited nearly equivalent muscle activation as the barbell bench press. Likewise, ratings of perceived exertion for each of the three exercises were comparable as well. Tip six, walking. A study by the University of Texas, its medical branch, showed that peripheral lipolysis was stimulated maximally at the lowest exercise intensity and fatty acid release into plasma decreased with increasing exercise intensity. You burn both fat and carbs when you exercise and the proportions vary with the intensity. As the intensity increases, so does the reliance upon muscle glycogen for energy over the fat stores. This is why a very low intensity Exercise, like walking, taps mainly into fat stores for energy, whereas high intensity exercise pulls much more heavily from carbohydrates, namely your glycogen stores. And this is also why some people think low intensity steady state cardio is the best for losing weight, especially from fat. When it comes to losing fat, every calorie burnt helps. So even relatively small amounts of walking will help you reach your goals faster. Tip seven is dips or cable chest raises. Why dips would be a great finisher, it's due to its ability to probably stimulate the lower pec, pars abdominalis, and their ascending fibers. Long term, as you keep on building and adding muscle tissue to your chest, you'll have them pop at a higher and healthier body fat percentage. Also, as you increase the surface area of your chest, the fat will be spread more evenly over your chest, still allowing you to maintain that shape. Tip eight is sleep. Unfortunately, it's a painfully underrated variable and can impact your recomposition success on an enormous scale. It cannot be stressed enough how vital sleep and stress is, all puns intended. Numerous studies have shown that people who sleep around six hours or less to have poor results with fat loss even in a caloric deficit. Subjects sleeping normally lost most of their weight as fat or subjects sleeping poorly lost the most of their weight as lean muscle mass. And all of this was just from one hour of less sleep per night, five days per week. It is in my experience that if we truly want to achieve pure fat loss, we simply have to pay much more attention to sleep. The National Sleep Foundation recommends seven to nine hours of sleep per night for young adults and adults seeking general health and well-being. Personally, I recommend anywhere from seven to eight hours of sleep to adequately provide enough rest for your body to recover and for your brain to function properly. To clearly explain, you can achieve results with less sleep, but if we're in the game of optimization, get that sleep. Nine is high intensity interval training, also known as sprint interval training. 
It's a form of interval training, a cardiovascular exercise strategy, alternating with short periods of intense anaerobic exercise, basically going as hard as you can, with less intense recovery periods where you catch your breath, until you're too exhausted to continue. High intensity interval training is not the big secret to fat loss. It can be a powerful weight loss tool when you know how to use it. Hit and burning fat. Research has shown that both fat and carbohydrates are burnt and the proportions vary with the intensity of the exercise. It also shows as the exercise intensity increases, so does the reliance upon muscle glycogen for energy over fat stores. As it gets more intense, so does the proportion of energy coming from glycogen compared to fat. This is why a very low intensity activity like walking taps mainly into fat stores, whereas high intensity sprints pulls much more heavily from carbs. However, multiple studies have shown that are done by Laval University, East Tennessee State University, Baylor College of Medicine, and the University of New England, Wales show otherwise. The research specifically shows that results reinforce the notion that for any given level of energy expenditure, vigorous exercise favors negative energy and lipid balance to a greater extent than exercise of a low to moderate intensity. Long story short, with regards to fat loss, high intensity interval training allows you to burn more calories in a shorter period of time compared to low intensity steady state cardio. This can affect your overall fat and at the end of the day, the fat balance. Long story short, with regards to fat loss, high intensity interval training allows you to burn more calories in a shorter period of time compared to low intensity steady state cardio. This can affect your overall fat balance at the end of the day. The major downside is that it's difficult to recover from. In my experience, I find the next day to be difficult to complete my daily tasks, especially with training and cardio. The final step is when most people say man boobs, they're talking about the excess fat tissue on a man's chest that gives them the appearance of having female like breasts. This technically the term for it is pseudogynecomastia, which basically translates to fake female breast growth which is a pretty accurate description of what's going on. Real gynecomastia is a medical condition characterized by the growth of male breast tissue, not just fat cells, but also generally the glandular cells that are responsible for producing milk for infants. This is caused by an increase in estrogen, a decrease in testosterone, or a side effect of some medication, and it should be treated by a medical professional. In this case, I would highly advise visiting yours.